Rural broadband is critical to Eastern Kentucky for three major reasons, education, jobs, and healthcare. Up until March of 2020, we'd had approximately 1,500 telehealth type calls. From March 2020 through September this year, we've had over 156,000. By increasing broadband access, we're able to work with patients to better their health care. But we're also seeing people coming into the area that are no longer restricted by their vocation. Without that connectivity, you see people leaving the area that are younger people with education that you want to keep around. You had kids that were having to go home and work virtually, working remotely. The challenge was, how do you even get access to them if they don't have broadband? And now you extrapolate that to say, well, what about people who want to continue their education or they want to work remotely? They've got to be able to have those tools. And if you don't have it, then they've got to find another way to make a living. So it does create uh, a whole new dynamic when you can bring that to them. It is very transformative and truthfully, it's one of these things that really we have to find a way to come together to make it happen. It enables a community to not only grow the community itself, but then attract other businesses to come in. It is such a vital part and a vital utility for this Appalachian region. With more access to broadband, we're seeing a tremendous growth in telework, which opens us up to a whole new workforce. If you're not connected, you're not even in the game. We're a rural area and it's rugged terrain. The way business models are built for broadband in Eastern Kentucky is the number of dwellings you pass. It's called passings. And the cost is usually broken down to cost per passing. In the metropolitan areas, the cost per passing is usually about twelve to $1,800 per passing in the private sector. In Eastern Kentucky, in today's prices, that can be anywhere from nine to $12,000 per passing in some of the very rural areas. The grant funding that's gonna be available has a 50% match, and so that's a huge challenge in the next two years. If you take a look, the 20th poorest counties in the nation are right here in Eastern Kentucky. Over 47% of our patients are on Medicaid, and we know that many of them can't afford the extra cost for broadband or, or any type of communication in their homes. Whether it's a cable company, a phone company, wireless ISP, they all have different methods to get it out there, but then they're also looking at what's that return on investment, what's that capital that they have to outplace. You have government that is getting money in and they wanna put money towards projects, but they also wanna get the greatest amount of coverage out of it, but they don't understand necessarily the technology that's tied in to even make that happen. And then of course, you've got the consumer. They may have limited budget, so there's only so much you can really charge them. So the challenge is really, how do you bring all of those folks together get the funding ready so that you can get it out there, but then also find a way to get that last mile to that homeowner and to that business. There's not gonna be one answer by one company. It's gonna be collaboration between the local ISP, between the middle mile providers, and even the likes that are out there. So how do we get the best coverage for the most people? And the answer is not always gonna be one technology solves it for everything. I think different technologies are gonna solve it for different areas. We've quickly learned how important it is to have access to broadband connectivity. So the hope is for officials, companies, telcos, ISPs, for us all to come together and recognize there's a way to bring this connectivity and we need to do it together now.